Hi, my name is Leon Roque, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand, Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis for the week ahead, starting the 29th of April. Hope you all had a great trading week and uh, looking forward to the week ahead. And if you like the analysis I provide every Sunday, please don't forget to like subscribe and share across your social media platforms as it's a free way to support the channel and press that like button uh, definitely uh, helps the uh, YouTube algorithm and get this quality content out to the masses anyways at least visible so um, week ahead 29th of April in the US all eyes will be on the Fed's interest rate decision on Wednesday followed closely by the labor market report on Friday so that's a big Definitely going to be a big deal um, for the US dollar. Also, investors will be scrutinizing ISM manufacturing and services PMIs alongside jolts, job openings data, foreign trade figures, factory orders and CB consumer confidence index. Internationally, April inflation rates for Germany, the euro area and Switzerland will be closely watched. Furthermore, flash Q1 GDP growth rates are set to be released for Germany and the euro area. Finally, the S&P Global will be published manufacturing, so will publish manufacturing PMIs for China, Canada and Switzerland. So, um, yeah, lots in the week ahead and some market moving news potentially. So let's get into uh, some of the trades uh, that I'm in and that I taken this week before we get into the uh, the weekly analysis and starting off really on the British pound Canadian dollar so this was a bit of a different trade I don't really talk about stop hunts really on the uh, on this analysis channel but this was a pair uh, that I got into fundamentally uh, the British pound is really the buy over the Canadian dollar uh, due to the expectation really of rate uh, cuts and when they're due right so the uh, the Canadian dollar we're looking uh, the market is expecting them to cut rates first and so um, you know the pullback you know here I think last week was due to a bit of a dovish um, Bank of England uh, governor and then we had this week I think it was the PMIs that came out at some point it wasn't retail sales it doesn't have it on here for some reason i thought it would have uh, shown up on here but basically the the uh, uk pmis came out which was supportive of the uh, the pound and so um yeah basically got in uh, at this price the one point uh, 695 somewhere around there and then pretty much swing trading and holding this up to uh where it is now uh got in on the aussie canadian dollar as well and the aussie cad again another stop hunt below the level right so uh stop hunts uh, tend to occur be below uh, obvious levels but also as well you really have to kind of try to trade them in alignment with uh the fundamentals right stop hunts appear everywhere but a continuation if, if it's not aligned with the fundamentals then the prices can just continue to go you know straight through right because ultimately it's really about value it's not about the technical stop hunts will just happen but the the continuation either to the upside or to the downside depends on whether the market thinks that that's a bargain price or it's expensive right still so uh, here was the level here here was really the stop hunt managed to get in at the 88 uh, two sevens and you're seeing where price is now on the euro australian dollar um this wasn't a stop hunt this was uh more of a supply and demand trade so uh prices came in to this this uh, supply zone right here and then uh saw an entry in and around this area managed to get in at the 1659s with a stop loss above the uh the, the, that wick high and uh, I'm still in this trade and um, so that's going well the trade that we ended up losing this week and I say we but there was a, a few traders in the group that ended up taking the same trade as, as this as well um, was the euro yen now the euro now the yen has been definitely um, had some issues which we'll get into uh, later on in the video, but uh, there was a stop hunt and I was expecting really the yen to strengthen 
based on um, really some interest rate hikes or the fact that they may be hikish, um, or hikish, hawkish um, going into their meeting on the Friday and a stop hunt appeared. But um, the market obviously didn't think that that was a bargain price and continued moving higher. And then the Bank of uh, Canada, you know, sorry, Bank of Canada, where did I get Canada from? The Bank of Japan ended up um, uh, being quite dovish. Um, and so pretty much we've just seen a bit of a, uh, is that a bit of but a, a massive sell off matter of fact on the yen. And so um, I just highlighted this just to show you that, you know, stop hunts do work. Of course, obviously I've traded those, but there was a stop hunt down here, which led to this move to the upside. And there was a stop hunt here on a bit of a lower time frame um, that sh that could have worked out as well. Both trades were obviously valid, but the market is, um, is has chosen to buy the euro right and against the uh, the yen and that's really the trade that ended up working out you know to the upside unfortunately this one didn't work out can't win them all of course you know these are you know some losers but some decent trades um taken anyway and uh, it was something that i you know with the uh with the information that i had i would take this trade a uh, hundred times out of a hundred but it's just that the um in, in in anticipation of a hawkish uh bank of japan but it just wasn't to be you know so that's just what it is so some decent trades and trading this week or the uh the week just gone so those are really the trades and uh, so getting into the analysis now and starting off on the uh, dollar index, the equally weighted dollar index, and uh, technically, you know, prices did pull back to this uh, to this zone, uh, this demand zone here. Probably bounced right, just right off it, right there, and um, and so the dollar overall against you know all the other currencies, so the euro, the pound, the the yen, the CAD, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, and the Swiss franc, right, it's equally weighted. Um, uh, it's, it's basically strengthened on the Friday. So really all you're looking for is pullbacks. And the reason why is basically because um, we've had, um, this is a Bloomberg article, uh, it's posted in our uh, Discord group, uh, the United States uh, News Channel, and it really, really just talks about fresh inflation data released on Friday cemented the message from the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell last week that high interest rates are here to stay for now. So it was PCE data that came out um, that was uh, sticky and some measures were actually um, uh, slightly higher. And so uh, it says the three straight months of worrisome inflation data indicate progress towards the central bank's 2% goal has stalled and suggests the first interest rate cut is getting pushed out further or pushed further out. Investors see one or two interest rate cuts this year beginning November, but concerns are growing. The Fed may not lower borrowing costs at all all in 2024 so this is where the rumor starts right so you know if you're new to the fundamentals i do have um you know some webinars that you can watch uh on my channel and um but i guess the the, the, the long and short of it is is that um when inflation uh goes higher or is remains sticky and uh, doesn't return back to the uh, Federal Reserve's 2% target, and most central banks have about a 2 to 3% target, then um, central banks are looking to hold for longer. Holding for longer means that the uh, interest rates are going to remain higher for longer, which means that investors are likely to get more of a return, right? When interest rates are being cut, it means that the central bank is actively looking to devalue their currency. And they'll only do that if they see inflation really coming down or going below their 2% target. And so um, with inflation not reaching their 2% target and looking to be stubborn, it looks like um, the uh, Federal Reserve are going to be holding for longer, which means that the dollar is more of a buy um, in comparison to maybe a central bank that is actually achieving the 2% target, inflation target, and you know where inflation may actually start to 
um, go beyond or go below that 2% target. So it says here, the hot inflation reading through March should write off any rate cuts in the first half of 2024, says Nationwide Senior Economist Ben Ayers. There's, there is also a risk that the further economic resilience pushes off any rate declines until 2025, a key downside risk for growth next year. So, yeah, it looks like the dollar is still looking like a buy um for me on pullbacks of course um if you can get it if you can get any um i am actually in um, also as well the euro dollar short um I've not not uh, gone over that analysis uh this week i'll do it next week depending on whether that trade wins or loses actually depending regardless whether that trade wins or loses i'll, I'll go over the uh the uh, the entry as well as the uh, the result, but um, let's see what happens with the euro uh, dollar short. But that's where I am uh, for the United States. So uh, yeah, looking at that also as well, uh, looking at the Fed Watch tool. If you look at the bottom right here, the current uh, expectation for a rate hold, um, you know, now is eighty eight point nine percent, and this is for June the twelfth meeting. Um, and you can see a month ago, uh, the, the, it was a hold was a 29%, right? 29% chance or 30% chance of a hold. And now it's 88, you know, percent uh, a month later. And so you'll see in that really kind of reflected in the, uh, with the dollar. So a month ago, you know, March, the, uh, what's that March, the, uh, the 20, uh, maybe a 25th or so, so somewhere around here right 25th 26th right you'll see and again prices go to the upside as as the market is pricing in holds right that's really what moves the markets over the medium to long term so uh, again you'll see in the if you go out to july you'll see as well an increase in holds so a month ago uh, it was 16 percent chance of a hold in july and now it's 68.7 in september you know, you, we had a 4% uh, chance of a hold and now we're at 42%. So again, the market is pricing, gradually pricing out rate, uh, rate cuts and more rate under the Fed to hold for longer. Looking at the dollar yen, interesting dollar yen this week. Uh, you know, uh, the Bank of uh, Japan have some credibility issues uh the you know the line in the sand was supposed to be 152 market you know the price is blown through that then it was like 155 and then the market's kind of just you know uh the price has blown through that as well and they still prices have gone past that 158 and um and uh the markets uh, the bank of japan still hasn't really intervened now um after their statement right or after the uh the uh, their announcement um they were actually overall dovish uh the bank of japan and it says here today's meeting green lights the yen carry trade and could see dollar yen accelerate towards the 160s 161s over the coming weeks the yen's 9.7 percent drop against the dollar this year is the largest fall of any g10 currency driven mostly by the wide gap between us and japanese government bond yields which is more than 375 basis points for the 10 year tenor that encourages borrowing and short selling yen in order to earn better interest or carry in dollars and other currencies and so i mean i was you know uh, uh, bullish on the yen and really expecting the, the bank of japan to come out quite hawkish but um obviously that that just didn't happen right and so you can be wrong on a trade idea it's fine you know as long as you know you're managing your risk right that's the main thing um but the carry trade pretty much if you're if you're looking to borrow you know the yen at something like maybe zero percent i think that's what it is right so zero percent right in comparison to buying the dollar at you know five point or borrowing the dollar at 5.5 .5 or putting your money into any currency that's higher that the difference that you make between the two is what's known as the carry and so you know you can borrow for cheap invest 
for a higher rate and get a higher yield. And so uh, that's really what's driving the market up to the up, up to absolute highs. And so short in the, uh, the, the dollar yen, although, um, you know, it was a sound fundamental idea, what's happened is, is that inflation obviously hasn't come down uh, for the dollar, which has basically meant that the uh, Fed, Federal Reserve is holding for longer, which means that the carry trade is likely to last for a lot longer. So for me now, uh, I was saying to the guys in the group, I've changed my buy on the on the yen for now even in the face of intervention uh, not really looking to buy the yen um, at all the intervention will just push prices down uh, and uh, to, to areas where you want to be a, a seller on the uh, on the um, dollar yen I think so any intervention that comes in even if it moves like you know 500 pips in a short space of time I do think the market is looking at just buying at these areas because the uh, Bank of Japan and Governor Ueda just really isn't that hawkish. So until there's a, you know, inflation really starts to come in um, a, a lot higher, then um, that's m maybe where I'll start to maybe change my bias on the, um, on the, uh, on the yen. But until that data really starts to come in, uh, I will remain, uh, uh, a seller of the uh, the yen um and also as well you know when intervention does come in let's say for example intervention comes in up here uh then uh, that's going to be the area where the bank of, just the bank of japan will look to defend so if prices do come back up to that area if it is here then they will end up um, that could be a, also a short there as well because that's going to be an area where they're going to look to you know defend that the, the currency from devaluing so that's a little tip there um dollar cad i do want to get long on this but i uh, haven't had an opportunity to technically um really the only way to for me anyway to look for entries on a, on a daily time frame is to look for either prices to move do something like this pull back to a demand zone and then move to the upside or you're looking at a pullback all the way back into this demand zone before looking at going long again reasons being is because the dollar is looking to hold for longer and the uh, canadian dollar bank of canada are looking to cut sooner Bank of uh, uh, British pound uh, dollar and um, the pound has pulled back a bit based on some obviously some decent news. We've pulled back up into this area of supply. Uh, decent short, decent short technically. Uh, I'm not really looking to take this trade um, just based on the fact that although I do think the dollar is the stronger out of the two, I think there are weaker pairs to trade the dollar against and the British pound isn't one of them. So um, I'll really choose the weaker, I'd rather choose the weaker pair uh, to trade. So I think if you do want to be short there, it's fine, but just um, know that the pound is actually uh, decent when it comes to uh, potential strength. If you're looking for buy trades, you're looking at a buy at that demand zone right there. Also as well from the uh, UK channel, uh, UK channel, it says markets have pushed back bets on the start of the Bank of England hiking cycle in recent weeks after fears the UK will suffer a resurgence in price pressures similar to those seen in the US. Investors are fully pricing in the first reduction in borrowing costs uh, for the August meeting, followed by one more cut at, by the end of the year. And while improving economic recovery picture, uh, while the improving economic recovery picture is welcome news, the upward pressure on inflation will add to concerns that a sustainable path to below target inflation has not yet been uh, achieved, says Chris Williamson, chief business economist at S&P Global Market Intelligence. The upturn in costs alongside solid demand suggests firms may seek to raise prices in the coming months. So inflation, again, just like the US remaining, uh, potentially remaining a bit sticky. And if that is the case, then uh, rate cuts in August uh, and potentially maybe just a reduction in rate cuts for the actual year, which should support the pound. Uh, hence why uh, I was... Uh, long on the pound CAD, uh, you know, around here.
so that's really what I'm looking for but not not against the dollar though but uh, these are the technical levels that you may want to look towards when looking to uh, buy or sell pound yen uh, just like every other yen cross pretty much you know it's uh, it's going to be a buy now so pull back into this demand zone I know it's a wide area of demand on the uh, on the daily but it's all good I think you'd really have to kind of wait for yeah it's gonna have to pull back a low the pips either you're looking at a pullback all the way down into this zone or you're looking at higher highs to be made then a pullback down into the into the zone or something like that so your options really if you're looking for buy trades on this is going to be that or those two if you're looking for sell then you're looking really just to um, wait for price to prove that it's expensive there and then a pull back into that supply zone but I think the path of least resistance is still to the upside until fundamentally the uh, inflation really starts to take a uh, uh, rise in Japan uh, euro dollar so euro dollar there was a uh, supply zone here which prices didn't react to the euros had some decent news this week to be fair um but uh, i think the, uh, the 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 dollar should really be the one uh, you really want to to buy so from a supply and demand perspective we don't really have any kind of supply to 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 look to take the trade until we get either up to the highs there or we start making lower lows and then a pullback up into that supply zone before looking at going short now uh, for the eurozone again um, when we look at you know which central banks are cutting first it says here from Bloomberg the European Central Bank can't commit to what will happen after a likely first reduction in borrowing costs in June according to governing council member Joshim Nagel if data and if data until the next meeting in six weeks increases confidence in reaching two percent goal i would be in favor of a cut rate cut in june uh, the Bundesbank president said wednesday however such a step would not necessarily be followed by a series of rate cuts so that actually is a, that little bit there is a bit more of the hawkish side of things um so although they're looking to cut rates in june um, they may reduce the amount of cuts depending on the data and it says nagalism is among the uh, more cautious officials supporting the beginning of monetary policy easing in june but calling for pr prudence when it comes to following uh, moves and so um, yeah so it looks like uh, the market's pricing in june cuts but maybe less cuts but either way you look at it the the u.s uh, dollar and the economy is in a better position than the euro than the euro and the european union so i would really expect prices to continue moving to the downside now how it moves to the downside who knows it could move you know a higher first before moving the overall lower but um i would expect really at least some sort of retest at some point of these lows so um let's see what happens with the euro dollar euro yen again covered this really it was uh the, the, the trade now is really to the upside in terms of if you're looking to buy the euro then it would really be against the uh the yen at the moment although i'm not really taking this trade or not looking to take this trade uh or trade this pair uh now uh really the pullback we'd have to wait for something like that or wait for again higher highs to be made let me just uh, zoom in and then a pullback into that area before looking at going long if you're looking to go short um, yeah I think I don't know where the next level would be even though over the last five years of of price action you still really haven't got a level if we're looking at all you know we're at pretty much all-time highs so in fact that could be something that was back in June 08 and I say all times but this is basically as far as the data that we've got on this uh, broker so yeah you can see where you are from from there so potentially you could look for shorts based on that 2008 high but let's see what happens on that um euro pound uh euro pound yes yeah. so basically prices did come up to this uh, fresh area of supply here and then ends up reversing and i think again the pound is is a is, is a is a pair that 
you know, really you should be looking to buy against the uh, the euro or it'll be my preferred buy against the euro. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what's happened uh, over the past week. It makes sense. The, uh, the euro looking to cut in June and the pound looking to cut in August. So that's why you're seeing prices move to the downside. So a nice buy there for anyone who was looking at shorting here from last week. And uh, if you are looking to buy the euro for whatever reason against the pound, I think this is a nice technical area. But um, personally, I would look for short trades against the uh, against the euro and buy the pound. Also, as well, this has now created a new supply zone right there. So any pullbacks into that zone, if you've missed out on that original trade, can be seen as an opportunity to look for shorts. And the Australian dollar, um, US dollar, uh, this is from last week's analysis, saying that technically I really did like this level, really nice level, and he did actually come down into it, right? So he spiked down into that area there and um, and moved to the upside. So the, uh, the Australian dollar actually uh, had some decent news out um, in terms of inflation, and um, inflation didn't come down as much as expected. So now the uh, Australian dollar um, is strengthening because, again, just like the US, uh, the US and the Fed, um, rate cuts are being priced out of the market. And so uh, I think any pullbacks, if you're looking to take this or trade this pair, you can look for pullbacks into that zone. If you're, if you're looking for a short trade, you can actually look for a short trade, you know, right now, really. But again, this isn't a pair that I'm looking to buy or sell simply because you've got really two strong pairs and two central banks who are looking to cut later. So why um, it's a harder trade to, to determine the direction on. So I would rather not. Um, looking at gold and gold has pulled back a decent amount, obviously, at demand zone didn't necessarily work although it kind of held a little bit but um it kind of pushed back down to the uh, two three uh 2300 area and basically we're getting a pullback so if you are continuing to be a buyer of the uh of gold then these are really your zones that you want to look to buy or sell i do think that uh gold is a definitely a long-term buy um, so deeper pullbacks uh, in terms of, you know, even better would be even an even better price, right? Eventually, the um, the Federal Reserve should want to cut at least at some point. So once they go into their cutting cycle, then gold should really again move to the upside. So let's see what happens. But if you get a pullback into these deeper levels, I think that's decent for a buy trade. And uh, if you think that gold should be capped at this uh, at these highs here, then you can look for some sell trades up into this supply zone. So that's it for this week. I um, hope you enjoyed the analysis. Don't forget to like, press that like button um, and uh, subscribe as well. And I hope you all have a great trading week. Until the next video, take care.